You, you know, the the other thing about that is like, you know, we, we've been doing this five years, uh, yep. five years in the business. And, you know, we, we've done a lot. We've done it pretty quickly uh, this year. Like we we recognize that we we were waiting you know to go to jeff's question we were waiting uh for the market to change and mm -hmm. you know while the market's on an uptick it's like okay well let's let's sell these things now the market's on the downtick um now it's like okay we are gonna we're gonna start buying these like our our goal this year for long-term rentals we plan on purchasing in between 150 and 200 houses mm -hmm. in the city of detroit for long-term rentals to try to prevent against some of this cash flow stuff uh going forward and then same thing with short-term rentals you know mm -hmm. so uh so that is that's a huge goal that we have but you know it, it's always you know to, to your point like it's all timing and 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 life right like yeah you know, we're we are we're in the position that we're in right now we recognize it and now we're trying to kind of adjust accordingly but you know be, being able to do what we've done over these last five years has made us um you know uniquely qualified to be able to try to tackle this stuff that we're trying to accomplish this year um and as annoying as it is that we don't have a hundred rentals right now you know we we recognize that that's an important part of the future of the business and that's mm -hmm. you know we kind of pivoted like pretty quickly to be able to do that change your financing changed all sorts of buying criteria partnered up with people like yeah. we did a lot in a very short period of time to be able to turn the ship in kind of a different direction and, and you know what that's what i call it's called business you you, you adjust and you you see what comes in you take what comes in and you adjust on the fly and uh this is you know that's why i love doing these podcasts that's why i love doing you know talking with people in business because you know what everybody says oh this is gonna be like 2008 no it's not it has its <laughs> own unique circumstances and you have to react that way now you can take parts of it from 2008 and apply but it's not like 2008 okay um i you know for anybody who uh was around during that i was you know i was just getting into the adulthood <laughs> you know, as far as oh, you congratulations! Know. You crossed, you crossed over. <laughs> we, we, were, I, we were rooting for you, Randy. Good job. I know, right? <laughs> so you know, I graduated high school in 2002, and back in 2008, I think I was just becoming a mechanic, and you know, I ended up getting laid off in 09. Um, went back to school. I, I've reinvented myself probably more times than anybody else has in their entire life. So it, it's crazy, but I have fun doing it and I've learned from every single thing that I've done. So um, you, you, you have to, Randy. I mean, yeah. it, it's it, it's so important to be able to um, to be able to do that. I mean, you, you listen to Todd's background, like, you know, the yeah. honor banks and companies that he's kind of talked about over over the course of time and things that we've done uh that he's done that i've done like mm -hmm. you're constantly um you know i like to look back in these like little five-year increments and so yes. we we're sitting at, a, at an investor lunch one time and and he was just kind of talking about like he had this throwaway comment and he's like isn't that crazy how much you can actually accomplish in five years and then he just kind of like kept his thought going and like for me my brain exploded i was like oh my god like five years ago like we were just getting into the flipping business we hadn't flipped one house you know five years before that you know i started working with todd and and with todd we wound up you know selling you know going through two acquisitions and then five years before yeah. that i was in a position to where i was working a corporate job uh but it was not my favorite job had a ton of debt made like a whole bunch of like headway to try to get rid of that debt and then was able to start that um entrepreneurial incubator that todd talked about at the very beginning so you just kind of look at these like weird five-year increments and i think for motivated people like yourself randy where you know you're always trying to reinvent it's like you're just learning you know you're learning and pivoting mm -hmm. and moving forward failing forward and man that's that's how you know that's what success looks like you know you just kind of keep doing that over and over and over and over and then pretty soon you know i started working at quicken loans in 2004 that means that i am 19 years into like mortgage real estate uh yep. credit uh you know all that type of stuff so pretty soon you're just like holy crap i did not intend to like 
be an expert in this field, but mm -hmm. you know, I can talk with you about mortgages. I can talk with you about like real estate agent stuff. I can talk with you about houses and flipping and credit. And like, it's just nuts. Like everything that's surrounding this business appraisals, you just learn it yeah. over the course of time. And even your job as a mechanic, I'm sure has helped you doing this in some weird way. Oh yeah. And that's the thing. Like, it's funny because, you know, I went to mechanic school. I went to Wyotech, anybody who knows Wyotech or whatever. Um, I went to Wyotech, you know, was a mechanic. When I got laid off in the auto industry, I went and become a photographer. I went to school and become a photographer. Did that for 10 years. Hmm. Then got it back into the automotive industry and on the other side, and now I'm in the R&D side of, and I'm a technician. So I'm still kind of back in the mechanic realm and that's my day job. I'm an electrical technician, you know, in the R and D space. And then I started this business doing wholesale and real estate completely separate, but guess what? It works because guess what? Everybody else in this area is in automotive yeah. and I can relate to sellers. I can relate to people who work in the automotive industry, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Hey, R Randy, one of the things that, you know, for, for your, for your listeners, and it sounds like you've done a great job of, of and we believe pretty highly in it is just, sur just partnering, surrounding ourselves with great people. Yes. Brian's phenomenal at helping anybody that needs help. Anybody that's got a question, anybody wants to ride around and shadow him or learn from Nicole or heck, I mean, we talk about Nicole a lot right now, cause we're talking about the flipping business. Um, We've got a leader, Jen Lamming, who ran our wholesale business for a while, moved over and is doing incredible things in the short-term rental business uh, mm -hmm. right now. We're, you know, we're partnered up with TC Greenwood down on the Detroit stuff. He's amazing. Love uh, TC. You know, Ryan and Alicia Tower okay. doing some wholesale stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and having people, like I hear some things that you're passionate about. There's nothing yeah. better than doing the things that you're passionate about. Jen loves hospitality and handyman stuff. Oh, yeah. She's running, she's running a hospitality business, a hundred percent. She's dealing with people. She's phenomenal at that. Nicole's got incredible design. So like our houses don't just get rebuilt and painted and carpeted. They get they get incredible people walk in, they're like, wow. And she started soft staging it. And now she gets to take those same houses and turn them into Airbnbs and they're knockouts, you know, and, and you put people in their passion zone. Uh, and it goes a long ways, but surrounding yourself with good people. And we say, last thing there is, we see all of these houses mm -hmm. and as opportunities. And back in the day, we were really, you know, we're, we're really good at flipping. And the yeah. market just said, hey, it's a great time to be really good at flipping. Uh, so we yeah. did. And like, it's yeah. hard to, it's hard to keep something. I, you know, I, it's easy for me to say, I go back and keep those 25 yeah. houses right now. But at the time you're like, it's a great deal. Like we just did a great job on it. The house is amazing. It's going to get multiple offers and sell for more than we, the ARV that we had initially. So why wouldn't you do that? Um, yeah, and and now the market's just in a great place. Yeah. It's in a great yeah, place yeah. for renting and stuff like that. So we're making that pivot and we just see them all as, as great opportunities and you put a great team around it and, you know, generally speaking, good things happen. Awesome. Now, um, I believe it was Andre Kingston who asked, may he contact you tomorrow? He has a few examples. And this is the guy who asked about the, the hunter cabin. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely not on that one. <laughs> uh, what, what's your next question? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, yeah. no, call, call Brian. No, no, a, a thousand percent. I'm, I'm, I'm not just paying lip service. Um, happy yeah. to help anybody. It's, um, Part of our isms are, you know, one of our isms are we go further together and yeah, we, we believe in that wholeheartedly. So one thing Cornerstone Metro Realty from YouTube actually has is, have you experienced flipping non-residential properties or um, just going into home building? Uh, we we haven't done anything non-residential, but the one, one of the things you kind of learn, like we haven't done that yet, but like constructions kind of construction not not to really dumb it down uh but if it made sense we've looked at apartment buildings we haven't done one of those yet either uh it really mm -hmm. just comes down to um we're super opportunistic about whatever comes across our plate 
And if you gotcha. were to come across a uh, commercial building that needs to be flipped or updated or it's unique and it, you know, it's an opportunity for us, then what we would do is we would take a look at that and we'd go, okay, um, like here's our, here are, are our people that, that can do these types mm -hmm. of jobs, um, you know, that do our houses. Can any of them do this type of job? And, you know, I think we have a couple that could probably handle commercial stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then mm -hmm. if not, then it's like, okay, you take a look at your network and you go, okay, well, who do I know? No, anybody? Hey, 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 Brian, you don't have to look any further. We've got a, we've got one of our construction teams right now, mass top construction. They're unbelievable with Mason and crew. And uh, he has been begging to do a commercial project. He's like, what? he's like, why do you guys do these, these, it, you know, these families, single family homes? You're crazy. Go to yeah. the construction. We'll white box it. It's so great. We'll rent it out. The people come in, they'll pay for their own construction for their little shop within your, your big building that you're renting out. He, he thinks we're absolutely nuts to have not done that. So we will do it at some point. And we've got yeah. a crew that is like, uh, that, that, that is all about that's one thing i find interesting about commercial is that you can rent it out to somebody and and they're going to pay for the renovation i know you don't have to so it's crazy it is. but yeah now um awesome and so with that being said we, we kind of already got into where you're at right now and i kind of want to sum it up a little bit you got your fix and flip which is what you guys started off with uh, you got your short-term rentals, which we already talked about for the lake houses. One thing we didn't talk about is about your wholesaling business. So why don't you go over that for a little bit and like, how are you getting your wholesale deals? What are you doing in, you know, because as far as your inbound or are you just JVing with people, with buyers or anything like that? Why don't you yeah. go over that? <clears throat> yeah, th this has gone through a couple of revolutions. Uh, so, and we've had maybe a revelation within a revolution. So <laughs> we started totally internally, just kind of doing it ourselves. Jen Lemming ran it. She was phenomenal. And then we, we found these things called short-term rentals and, and she was like born to do them. So, you know, <clears throat> Jen's like, how can I get, move over to here and do this? <laughs> so we've done a couple of turns. We brought a, a uh, we brought another leader in to, to run the wholesale internally. And we did, um, Oh, I, I stuck it somewhere. I was going to show you a picture of our, um, what I do with it? Oh, got it. Our, uh, our postcard with Brian's beautiful family on it. But uh, <laughs> we, we have done, uh, we've done postcards. Front we've, and center, Todd. Front and center. Oh, all man, the time. I literally just had it. <laughs> you, know, you know what happens? I cleaned I know the is. office a little bit. So it looks clean. If you look here and here, it's really not clean. But I cleaned it so that, you know, it would, it would look good for you, Randy. Uh, did, did you, but in cleaning it, I knew where it was before nightstand? I cleaned it. No, I don't. How often does that happen? Is it, is it uh, on your nightstand, Todd? Is that where you put it? <laughs> oh, man, they're everywhere, dude. They're, we got an entire refrigerator with just Brian's family on it. It's, it's so, so do you, before you go to bed, you kiss your wife and then look over, see oh, his yeah. photo, kiss him goodnight, you know? Sweet, sweet <laughs> dreams, Brian and Sarah. Hi, buddy. Nate and Bryn. <laughs> see you in the morning. Guys. Uh, but, uh, so we, so we did that spin and, and we just, you know, we were doing pretty good. I, in fact, I was just running through the numbers with a super small team. Um, barely even trying. We did like 30 deals two years ago and we did, uh, even 15 last year as we were just kind of almost not even trying to wind it down. You no, know, went over, went a little over 200 grand, uh, mm. with that business, but we were also pumping a lot of money into it. I mean, we were putting some money into the, the marketing yeah. too. So that was hardly all profit. Um, but uh, but near the end of the year, we kind of realized we just weren't as good at the sales process as we wanted to be. And we found an incredible mom and pop shop, uh, Tower Home Buyers, Ryan and Alicia, who are doing some really cool things, had some mm -hmm. great processes in place. And we've really converted over. Ryan, we put, you know, a couple of VAs around it. We've put uh, a great acquisitions person, a great dispo person. We've got some offer makers and we're doing right now 100% uh, okay. in, in pumping out text and we got a great <clears throat> process around it. And we're starting to really get some traction on that front. But we just started that, you know, a couple months ago. 
So we're just starting got to put it. those in place, starting to see the fruits of that. And then we'd like to build and scale and get, you know, we've got a goal to get into a second market this mm -hmm. year, whether it's Grand Rapids or Ann Arbor, but we kind of want to nail it and scale it first here yeah. in Detroit. And we've, we've another goal we have for 2023 is to really figure out our tax, our tech stack. So <clears throat> we're going from like REI Reply and Twilio and some, you know, smaller quick hit stuff that's great and nimble to yeah. like left main and Salesforce and and um, <clears throat> launch control and stuff like that, where we've got a little bit more power and data and we're, we're putting an REI SIFT in place and stuff like that. So we can really get control of the data as we're doing a lot of data and skip tracing right now. So we're starting to put a skip? big company around it. It ends up being a different tech stack and company yeah. and you need some more people to kind of fill those gaps. Uh, but definitely. when you got a great process, you can, you can kind of build around it. You got a great team. And Ryan and Alicia are phenomenal, so.